You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Somebody may want to the gaming dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Where the Demon Lurks. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alrighty. Let's do it. Alright. <clears throat> a mare. Which one was a mare? Ah, yes, him. The cat boy. Cat man. Cat demon. Okay. Right, then, next on the agenda is regarding sin ratings. The team, the team and RD want feedback on a new sin they discovered. Replying to long messages online with a single word response. Ah, uh, fine. With that, the rest of the meeting goes on, although you struggle to contribute much to the discussion. Your mind is adrift and you'd rather be anywhere else but here. Still, you force yourself to remain somewhat, somewhat aware until the end of the meeting. And that's everything for today's meeting. We'll meet, uh, we'll meet again next week. Same day, same time, as per the schedule. Until then. Hmm. Nox is the first to leave, and just before Vendrake goes, you both exchange dirty looks with one another. Once Vendrake is gone, you quickly open your portal and take your leave. There's somewhere you need to be. Where is he? Vendrake paces circling around the Demon Lord's desk, the very desk he has always been at the foot of, diligently serving his master's plans. Though usually calm and composed, the general is agitated to the nth degree after what happened in the meeting. How dare he strip me of my rank! Me! The first demon general! After many lifetimes of services! That insolent brat! Vendrick slams the desk hard with his fist. The vibration causes the pile of documents and the photograph on the desk to fall. He grabs the frame and looks at the picture of the previous demon lord, eyes longing for the command of the superior leader. My lord, you will always be our true leader. The fates were cruel to take you away and to leave us with. Forgive me. I tried to teach young Kobu, but he has cast me aside. Until now, every demon lord he has he served he served have given Vendrake a sense of pride. He felt like he was the right hand man of the greatest and most powerful being in all of creation. Oh, but how people can change. His stomach burns at the mere thought of taking orders from someone who is only it was only demon lord by title and nothing else. His fingers creak as he considers all the lost potential in the underworld. Everything that Vendrick worked to protect is crumbling away in the hands of this pathetic excuse of a demon lord. If I were a demon lord, I'd run this place differently. No more nonsense that will jeopardize everything we've built. Demons are meant to torture souls, and that's what they'll do. Processing souls day in and out. Then the glory of the underworld will be known to all, and the mortals will learn to fear us demons again. If only... If only I had a chance. Vendrick's monologue is interrupted by the sound of the office door opening slightly. Who's there? Vendrake opens his coat to reveal the monstrous mouth of his on his stomach. His second mouth begins to emanate an orange glow, ready to spew forth molten fire. Although there's nothing there, he is aware of a presence with him in the room. A presence that wants to speak to him. Whispers surround him in all directions. I see. So it's you. I've only heard stories, but your presence here is an honor. He returns to a neutral stance and stands in contemplation while looking at the desk. The room fills with a cold atmosphere. Vendrake is stoic pillar in a lifeless space. His eyes widen to become milky gray. He continues to speak, although no one is there. Yes, of course. I can deliver. Let me be the Demon Lord, and I promise you won't regret it. The cool atmosphere was gone in a thumping heartbeat. Vendrick's eyes, Vendrick's eyes return to normal as he looks around, somewhat perplexed. His memory of the past minute is a bit foggy, but he feels a strange confidence in himself. Confidence in a sudden stroke of brilliance. He leans into the seat and steeples his fingers together. A wide smile grows across his face, which also reaches the gaping mouth in his stomach. Yes, this will do nicely. And behind the door of the Demon Lord's office, a hooded Nox sits waiting on the other side. He hears the sound of Vendrake opening a portal. Without saying anything, he cloaks himself in invisibility and retreats into the shadows. Oh, pretty. You stand in silence on a riverbank illuminated only by an artificial light floating in the sky. As far as the eye can see, there's only the gravel beneath your feet, and the dark river before leading deeper into the darkness of the underworld. This is a special floor. You call it the last floor. A misnomer is there is no last floor in the underworld. Instead, it is the final resting place of all demon lords. It was here that you attended your father's funeral. You listen to the murmur of the running river water and remember the day you held onto the boat that your father's body was placed in. Pa, I don't know if you can hear me, but I've been messing up pretty badly. Your heart aches his thoughts about how you haven't changed one bit from the weak little demon that stood by those riverbanks before. I really wish you were here, Pa. I don't know what to do anymore. 
I am even really wondering if I'll be the first Demon Lord ever to quit. If that's even possible. You hear the sound of a portal opening behind you. Oh. Boss! You turn around and see Fortis and Amara by side by side. We were concerned about you, Lord Kobu. Overwhelmed by tiredness, you can't even fake a smile. Sorry, you guys. Sorry, I made you guys worry. I just wanted to come and take in the scenery. Oh no, you can't say that after the scene you pulled back in the meeting room. I say this for myself, but Vendrick deserved it. That demon is always going on and on about regulations and messing with my creations. A mare. Fortis approaches you and puts a hand on your shoulder. Where's your fire, boy? Where's the demon that I trained that trained when he was just in diapers? Where's your fight back? I don't know, Fortis. Maybe it's gone. Maybe I never had it in the first place. I can help you look if you need if you need help. Amara steps in next to Fortis. Uh, finding things is a lot easier with, with more hands. <laughs> oh, must be sorry about that. His floating appendages rise up and wave to you. Despite being bogged down by your sullen state, a smile, a small smile breaks through. Thanks for the offer, Amara. The thing is, I'm not sure finding the spirit to fight back is enough to keep me here. It's not just the mistakes. I don't know if I have any purpose in this company. You want to quit? I... Fortis suddenly pulls you into a bear hug and buries your, and buries your face into his chest. Yeah. You can't give up, boss! Fortis, you're suffocating our lord! Amara grabs hold of the larger demon's arms with all his hands and tries to pull him away, but Fortis is just too strong. You're you, and you're going to have a hard time becoming demon lord. But you shouldn't see yourself as a failure. You just need to keep trying and you'll get it somehow. Fortis frees you from his hug and... And you pull your head out with a loud gasp. Man, your cologne is strong. Cologne? I don't wear cologne. You take a few short breaths before continuing to speak. Fortis, Amer, thanks for worrying about me. I think... I have to think long and hard about all this. We'll be here for you, my lord. Yeah, give it some time. At least you're willing to think about it. You sigh, but maintain a small, hopeful smile. Knowing that your allies do care about you. What do you say if we go back to my office and just play around a go-kart racing with some drinks? I'm game. I'll beat all your I'll beat all your butts. And not if I get the blue star first. You open a portal and the three of you head off head for the office. Oh boy. The moment the three of you step into your office, you sense a heavy tension in the air. Vendrick is standing in front of your desk with his hands behind his back. Vendrick, what are you doing here? Vendrick observes you with a stoic face, yet there is something about his eyes. The way his eyes are fixated on you portrays his preoccupation on a single thought, one that you are unable to tell. Now's not a good. Now's not a good time to look for trouble for, for trouble with the boss, Vendrake. Oh, another portal opens and Knox appears. Knox, why are you here? Vendrake summoned me, and he said there was an important announcement. Yes, it's a very important announcement, and I wanted everyone to be here. From behind his back, he pulls a short scepter. Its length made from solid gold. An enchanted blood ruby sits atop the sits at the top, clenched within Vendrake's demonic claws. Vendrick's eyes glow a haunting yellow, and a strange surge of power crackles through the air, originating from Vendrick's scepter. Vendrick, where did you get those? Yeah, quit fooling around with your toys and give the boss's office back. I don't think so. That backstabbing slacker has wasted the Underworld's time and will tarnish the title of Demon Lord no more. Vendrick, you don't want to do this. Vendrick points the blue sphere at you, and a bolt of lightning flies forth, the blast moving with such speed you have no time to move. It hits you square on the chest, sending you flying back. You slam against the bookshelves behind you, gasping as the force knocks the breath out of you. Treason! The imposing demon rushes for the second in command. Vendrick sees their approach coming, taking a bag of coal he keeps on his belt and throwing it into the gaping mouth that's part of his stomach. Useless! The demon's stomach opens up its hatch, and a bright fireball fires from the abyss of his belly, hitting Fortis, hitting Fortis straight on. Fortis staggers backwards and falls to his knees. What? He was never that strong before! Fortis clutches his stomach in pain. A bright pool of blood forms around him. You struggle to pull yourself up. Through your blurred eyes, you see Fortis injured. Fortis! Whatever happened to Vendrake is no joke. Even the physically strongest of the generals couldn't stand back, couldn't stand back up from that attack. The fright through the stabbing pain coming from the blast hits you on your chest, you manage to stand up. Amara, looking confused, pulls out his gun at the second in command. Enough of this, Vendrake! Go ahead and try. You don't understand the power I wield. As long as I have this scepter, I'm as powerful as any demon lord. Just shut the fuck up! I'm the Demon Lord, you said so yourself plenty! You 
extend your hand to impart pressure upon Vendrake. Only a weak wall of energy falls upon him. Its force is no stronger than a regular mortal trying to hold Vendrake down. What? My powers! Vendrake easily breaks free of your pressure right with a wave of his scepter. Huh. I guess an old war relic isn't so effective after a few thousand years. No matter. You're no more powerful than a mere hatchling now. Vendrake looks on with a malicious smile. You don't seem pleased. You should be glad. The mayor fires a shot from his gun, but Vendrake quickly knocks the shot to the ground by spinning the scepter. Fool! Ah! Damn. No, just stop him, Nox! The frog demon does not budge from where he stands. Nox, what are you doing? No. He backs away and casts berries onto the other two generals, effectively sealing them away from battle. No! Good. You see, Nox knows when he sees a real leader. Now for you. This free pop hand, he points at you. Lifting his scepter high in the air, he begins to charge a bright green ball of energy. Vendrick steps forward, closing the gap between the two of you. The end of your own short-lived reign and life encroaching further. Run, my lord! But you can't run. Your legs feel, the, feel like sandbags, and you don't have the strength to move them. For too long you've treated them, treated me like crap. After the thousands of years of service I gave to every demon lord, it ends here. Today marks the age of my reckoning. He leans in closer towards you. Your time is over, Kobu. No one's going to save you, especially not them. If you're going to kill me, save me the boring monologue. Even when that stares you down, you still want the easy way out. Before I give you death, I'll make sure to beat it into you with, with how much fail. I'll make sure to beat it into you with how much of a you how much of a failure you're how much of a failure you're how much you're a failure of a demon. He waves his scepter, and your body flies like a ragdoll across the room, smashing through the bookshelves. Hendrick tosses you into the air again, firing a blast of green energy at you. Ah! You scream in agony as you feel your entire body is set on fire. Collapsing onto the ground, you're unable to move. Vendrick walks over to you, ready to plunge the sharp end of his scepter through your head. Die, Kobu! You feel time slow as Vendrick's attack nears you. Mustering whatever power you have left, you desperately try to open a portal beneath you. It does not matter where, you just need to get away. An intense heat emanates from the palm of your right hand. You yell as you feel as though the heat is consuming your entire right hand. A blue portal opens and you fall through. Vendrick's scepter misses you and smashes the spot your head was lying on. No! The next thing you know, you're lying face first in the middle of a street shrouded by darkness. I... You let out a forced breath of air. I... With shaking hands, you try to conjure up a portal, but nothing happens. Fuck you! Fuck you, Vendrake! You collapse to the ground as your vision succumbs to the darkness. Oh my. Two years have passed since that day. It's the dead of night, and all those who reside in the town of Kibbleton... Kibbleton? Are asleep. A single soul notices a sky blue portal opening in the middle of the vacant streets. A figure emerges and looks around, amused by their surroundings. Heaven dog? Heaven dog. <laughs> Heaven doggo. So, this is where you've been hiding all this time. Chapter 1 When a Bell Rings. Ding dong, bing bong! The store's door chimes the mundane tune it sings for each and every soul. Ha! <laughs> Welcome to Sunny Fruits, the family market. The customer ignores your greeting and heads back and heads back down and has heads down the drink aisle. Now let's see. What do we got? Info. Oh, here we go. Sunny Fruits. Oh God. Sunny Fruits. Sunny Fruits, the friendliest family mart in town. Rain or shine, we'll be there to serve you with a smile. It's a franchise jingle that I had to learn on the first day of the job. Sunny Fruits is a, ri is a rising franchise in this part of the country. According to the employee handbook, the business person who started the franchise started with just a fruit stand by the streets. Then they came into a great fortune one day and decided to go into the convenience store industry. You watch as the customer decisively peruses their options in the corner of your eyes. A brassy jazz scene continues to mumble from the cheap, stero cheap store stereo system. It's a playlist that leaps every 30 minutes. Long enough that the average customer is sighted, but short enough to drive employees insane. The customer picks a can of cola from one aisle and a frozen dinner from the back. Approaching the counter, he dumps it all in front of you unceremoniously. The first day they'll knit the sight of the frozen dinner is nondescript reverse packaging. You reach out apprehensively. Please don't be a chicken, please don't be a chicken. Don't be a chicken, please don't be a chicken. You lift the container over and it's a meal labeled broccoli, Bro Broccoli Supreme. Your anxiety quickly fades away. Putting on your best welcoming smile, you start scanning the items. Would you like that heated up for you? The customer shakes his head and drops the exact chains on the counter. 
Just as the receipt printer begins to work, he's left the store, items in hand. Rip, scrunch, thud. You visibly slump as you tear off and dispose of the useless receipt. Your phone comes out without thinking, your hand engulfing the cheapest device you use to get by. Who cares about having something fancy when, it just needs to, when you just needs to make call and send texts? The digital clock shows it's 15 minutes to 12. Your shift is about to end. Good. At least there aren't any more customers coming in. Then I can... What the... Can what? Ah, what the... You nearly drop your phone when your manager appears to your right, seemingly out of nowhere. Gah, King, don't do that! While backing away from your manager's sleepy stare, you stuff your phone back into your pants. What? Not my fault if you weren't paying attention to me standing next to you. The slim alpaca puts his hands on his hips and smiles warmly at you. He says that, but he's a sneaky bugger. He snuck, all, he snuck up on you so many times, you know no amount of complaining will stop him, so you leave it be. Maybe there really is something wrong with you. I was thinking, that's all. What is it, the last frozen chicken dinner? Nailed it. King's got a killer gut instinct. You can't help but, you can't help but admire him for it. He notices things about people more easily than other mortals you've met. This natural talent is surely why he earned his rank as manager at this convenience store. And that keen eye will only bring you misfortune if he sees what you really are. You smile sheepishly back at him. How do you eat those things every day? There's enough calories in them to feed two people. It's cheap and filling. What else? Well, forget it, forget it for today. Here, I made you lunch. King, I can't. I insist. Don't make me waste food. You can't work if you're not eating right. He looks at you with pleading eyes and a wry smile. You relent, smiling back at King. Okay, if you insist. Just, but let me buy the drinks. Lemon iced tea good for you? You got it, big boy. By the way, uh, you might want to pick something with less caffeine in it. He winks at you. I'll meet you outside after I hand over the payback to, pay to Team B. The alpaca walks back to the break room with a skip in his step. Alright guys and gals, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Oh lord, a mutiny in hell. Oh boy. Oh, what a what a wild episode. Alright, looks like Heaven is also now directly getting involved, so... Alright y'all, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye